Number 40. Predict the valence electron molecular orbital configurations for the following and state whether they will be stable or unstable ions. And then we have AR2 with a 2 plus charge. All right. Now, before we address the mess, which is this blech, down here, <laughs> the first thing we have to figure out is if we want to draw a molecular orbital configuration, you got to find out how many valence electrons you're working with. So the first thing is we're dealing with argon right? AR on the periodic table. If we scan the periodic table, we're going to find that argon is in group either 8A, so group 8A, or 18, depending on what your periodic table says. It's, it's a noble gas. But the lucky number here is 8, right? 8's all around because argon has 8 valence electrons. But we have two of them. So if you got twice as many argons, you got twice as many valence electrons. So in that case, I'll say that I have two argons, and I'll multiply by the eight valence electrons. I'll just say val E for valence electrons, and two times eight is a total of 16 valence electrons. Now, this would be great, except that they told us that this molecule has a plus two charge, right? And plus two, pluses means that you lose electrons, so you're losing two electrons. So from my total of 16, I just have to minus two electrons, and that will get me, well, what is going on there? That will get me my total, 16 minus two, we have a total of 14 valence electrons. Cool. So we're gonna put this on the back burner for a little bit, because now we can address what's going on at the bottom. Now, in order to figure out what molecular orbital configuration you are, you have to basically choose the right template. Now, there are two total templates, depending on what group you're in. And since we just said before, argon is a noble gas, it's in group 8A. So this template is going to be the one that we're going to use. So I'll pull this one up, which means that for this question, we're not going to be using the other one because we're not in that group. Uh, you could pause the video if you want to just write down the other molecular orbital configuration. But as far as this, we're basically done so we can get rid of that. Now, the reason why there are two different templates is something called SP orbital mixing. Uh, that type of information probably will be skipped over in your general chemistry course. But if you guys are majoring in chemistry or taking upper level chem classes, like a physical chemistry class, you will go back to that information. But as of right now, it's just easiest to memorize the templates. And in this case, we have AR2 with the 2 plus charge. Okay, so now the question is, how do I take this template and make, you know, make it AR2 2 plus's own? Well, the first thing is, is we have to address these uh, little highlighters, right? Now, for your molecular configurations, it's going to be coming from your S and your P orbitals. But is it going to be the 2s, 2p, or the 3s, 3p, or the 4s, 4p? Well, now this goes by the period that argon is located in. And argon is in period 3. So in this case now, 3s all around. So we're dealing with uh, 3s's here. And just know that this is called a sigma. So you got a sigma molecular orbital right? That's in the 3s. And for every bonding orbital, see how there's no star here, so that means bonding, you have an antibonding equivalent. So here I have my bonding and my antibonding equivalent, and then these two are the same thing. But once again, threes all around. So 3px, these are your pi orbitals now. So 3py, 3pz, 3py, 3pz, and 3px. Okay. Now comes the fun part, where we have to take my 14 valence electrons and distribute it between these molecular orbitals. Now, the way that I wrote them is from the least amount of energy to the greatest amount of energy. And as you get higher and higher and higher in energy, you're becoming more unstable. So you always want to drop in your electrons at the beginning and then just keep gradually increasing until you reach your total, in this case, 14. Now, just know that for each molecular orbital, all of these, each one, you're only allowed a max of two electrons. 
So let's just drop them in and see until we get up to 14. So obviously I'm going to fill this molecular orbital up, right? So I'm going to say that I have two electrons. I'm not at 14 yet, so I'm just going to keep going. Here is my first antibonding orbital because I see a star. I'm going to drop the two electrons there. I have only four written. I need 14, so I'm going to keep going. Here's the next one that I'm going to drop in. I have two electrons here, so I have a total now of six. So I got to keep going. Now this one is grouping together two molecular orbitals. Now they're grouped together because they are at the same energy level. So there's two max here and two max here, making this number being a max of four. And let's see, if I put in a four here, did I reach my quota? Two, four, six, six plus four is 10. So I still have four left over, so I gotta keep going. And the same thing here, two um, molecular orbitals, they're grouped together, they have the same energy. So two electrons here, two electrons here, that's a total, a max of four. And let's see, four plus four is eight, 10, 12, 14, and we reach the quota. So that means this last one has zero electrons in it. Now, generally speaking, uh, if you wanna write a molecular orbital configuration, you technically only have to write up until the last electron is placed. So this one right here, since no electrons are placed in it, you don't even have to write it. And what I'll do is I'll just bring this down a little bit, box it off, and we have the valence electron molecular orbital configuration of AR22+. Now the next thing is, from this configuration, we have to you know, state whether this is gonna be a stable or an unstable ion, especially if they're talking about molecular configurations and they're talking about stability, they secretly want you to find out the bond order because the bond order will be able to tell you if you will make a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond or even a bond at all. If you're not gonna make a bond, chances are you're not gonna be stable. So let's see, what is the bond order formula? Well, it's this one right here. It's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take our number of bonding electrons minus the antibonding and divide by two. So let's just set it up now. Bond order equals something minus something else divided by two. Let's find out what these are first. The easiest one is to find the antibonding because remember the antibondings are the ones that have the stars. So look for those stars. I see a star here and I see these stars over here. So there are two electrons and a total of four electrons over here. So two plus four, I have a total of six antibonding. So let me just maybe get rid of that. We have a total of six antibonding. So now comes the bonding. It's all the ones that do not have the star in the upper right-hand corner. So we got two electrons plus another two, that's four. Four plus four is eight. So I have eight um, bonding electrons. And if you add these up, right, eight plus six, you should get a total of 14. So that's a good check. But in this case, to find the bond order, we're actually going to subtract. So let's just do the math. Eight minus six is two. Two divided by two is one. And that is the bond order. But now what does that actually mean? Well, we could think about it in terms of the lines of the bond. So when the two argons form, you will get one line. And one line is a single bond. So you will actually form a bond here. So if you can form a bond, specifically a single bond, is this a stable or an unstable ion? Yeah, it's a stable ion. Just to put it into perspective, if you found a bond order of zero, that means that no bond was formed. And chances are, if no bond was formed, would it be stable? Nah, it would be unstable. So that's the difference there. But as far as this question, it's all done. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you with more problems. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day out there.
Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.